All right, I think we can start. Welcome everyone on the Irish SQL Server User Group meeting. Um, I hope everyone is ready for tomorrow's Dublin Horse Show, and uh, that's why I had to pay twice for the for the hotel when I was booking in myself. Uh, but hopefully do during this. Uh, summer meeting, you, you will have some, a little bit of fun with the uh, uh, integration services. Um, my name is Hubert Kowiczewski, and as you can see, I work for Codec DSS, this is an Irish company, which is like a, over, it's like, it's 30 years old, and we've just started our thir 31st year. Uh, we have also offices in Cologne, in, in Warsaw. I'm actually based in Warsaw. Um, so, but I mostly work for uh, customers, Irish-based uh, customers. Sometimes for UK customers, sometimes for Polish customers. And very rarely for German customers. And uh, uh, I'm there, as you can see, I'm there over eight years. I specialize in Microsoft BI stack, uh, mostly working with data uh, warehouses, um, business intelligence, and uh, I've also um, been trained in PDW, which is uh, called uh, APS now. Um, but Kodak uh, uh, is like a is a company who works with different, also different vendors. So we also work with Oracle, business objects, and other uh, other software vendors. I used to be developer, but um, I think who was the uh, previous uh, uh, leader? Group lead Niall. Yeah, Niall Flanagan. Yeah, Niall Flanagan. He also went through this similar way. He used to be a developer, developer. He said he was you. He was used to developing sexy things, and then he became wise man <laughs> and turned into database. So I think I'm going through the same path. Um, I also did some of the. Check something. And ba, 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 ba. Yep, presentation mode. Yep. So um, I'm also a member of a data platform advisors. Uh, this is a group of people. And it's it's not that small, but it's like every time Microsoft um, develops a new feature or improves the feature in SQL Server, they, after initial development period, they come to us and they ask, um, and they organize each month or every three weeks, they organize a, a Skype a session to talk about uh, different, different features. So we, sometimes we know <coughs> about the things that will, uh, will appear in uh, four weeks or eight weeks time uh, as a preview uh, for you and I also because I okay I started uh, my first user group which I was attending to was actually this group that was uh, I don't know seven years ago and then when I moved to Warsaw I went to and I started to work for um, Polish uh, work, yeah. Be active in Polish uh, um, SQL Server user group, and currently I co-lead the, the Warsaw uh, chapter. And a little bit of marketing. Uh, we organize every each year. We organize a SQL Day conference. It's uh, three days in May. Uh, one day of uh, workshop and two days of conference. This is in Wrocław, beautiful city. 100 bridges, if you want to see them. 
it's actually located on the island, uh, on the on the river and uh, on the on the banks of 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 the river. Uh, we every year we have a good uh, speakers, including including Adam Mechanic, Bob Ward, Danny Sherry. Uh, you know these are people who are not so often in in Europe, and you can see them actually for really really you know low cost. You can say because flights to Wrocław are not that expensive, and conference is uh, the price level is Polish price level. So and uh, I think. 50% of sessions are in English, so I think that won't be a problem for you. Uh, we usually have three tracks uh, for DBAs, uh, developers and uh, business intelligence people, and more info can be found on sqlday.pl. We have also Twitter uh, and our DBA website. The first announcements are going to be published around December, January. And we sh for sure we will have somebody who is not that often in Europe from, from the USA and uh, later we will uh, uh, publish more information about other other speakers. So what we are going to do today, we, I will show you how to marry SSIS with other vendor database. So I've selected Oracle. And why Oracle? Because it's actually it's quite often used, and the other thing is that it's kind of a pain in you know what, and to to set all this stuff and to to work with different options when you import data from from Oracle. Um, I'm actually it, the majority of of that session is going to be technical session technical uh, demonstration, so you will see how different options are kind of influencing on what we are getting from, from Oracle. Um, the other thing is that uh, yeah. um, normally when you start to import data you have two options when you get that data. You have, you have pull option and you have push option. So it's like push it's the most convenient because somebody is, you know, trying to give you data, or you retrieve an extract from other system, and you just read it. It's usually in the form of CSV files, text files, XML files, and that's kind of easy because um, those connections there are easy to set up, and we ha usually have no problems with them. Also, reading from other SQL Server databases. That's not a problem because Microsoft knows their own technology and uh, it's used to kind of a, uh, to which it uses the same protocol as with SQL Server, so also not a problem. The problem starts when we have to talk to other vendors like IBM or Teradata or, or Oracle. Then we have issues with un incompatibility, 32 bit, 64 bit and other stuff. And uh, also setting a whole thing up in the right order, um, ODBC drivers, ODDB options, and so on and so on. You'll see most most of it. We're going to see most of it. So um, let's get this started. I'll start with demo, and then I'll sum, sum up everything. Any questions so far? Not yet. Okay, good. <coughs> so, briefly, my environment is that I have a, um, and there was a magic key combination which was turning that into full screen. Uh, what was that? I think it was with insert, no, pause, yeah, okay, good. So I have my SQL server, uh, sorry, I have my Oracle server separately. I have my machine with the SQL server separately, so I can push my, I can grab my data from, from Oracle, I can have it in, I can take it into SSIS and I can uh, 
push it to SQL Server. Um, the other thing is that everything what you're going to see is uh, going to be see um, going to be visible from the BI developer level. So I'm not going to show you how to set up the the server uh, SQL Server itself, where you actually schedule your SSIS jobs, because that's another piece of uh, uh, work to do. But I'll show you what uh, is visible from uh, from BI developer point of view. So I have my I have my client uh, machine, which is here. And then I'll show you how what what need what uh, what will what we are going through when we when we retrieve data from from Oracle. So first thing first, um, when you when you uh, when you think about getting data from from Oracle, you think about SSIS, and you can see that. When you open S uh, when you open Visual uh, Visual Studio, there is something which you can describe as a connector to uh, to Oracle, and it's in here. Yeah, can you see that? Maybe I'll s I'll check if I have zoom. Not here. One sec. So here on the top, you can see that we have uh, we have something. You know, we've just installed Visual Studio. We have something like Microsoft OLED pr B provider for Oracle. Happy days. Can we start reading data? I'm not sure. I know my server is production I'll try something in here I hit test connection and boo nothing nothing because why because we we have to have Oracle client installed and how do we do that uh, we go we have to register on our Oracle site on our Oracle website we have to download uh, client software and both 32-bit and 64-bit and we have to remember that both packages needs to be installed why because Visual Studio is actually a 32-bit application and it won't work only with 64 uh, with a 64-bit driver uh, anything that we develop and uh, schedule later on the SQL Server will work with uh, with the SQ with SQL Server uh, sorry with uh, with 64-bit uh, uh, drivers. So what I did, I've I've separate uh, I've uh, set up a separate machine, and I've installed 32-bit um, client and 64-bit uh, client. 64 yeah 64-bit client. The next thing is that um, the way how Oracle connects Oracle client connects to uh, to um, to the database. Yeah. So what usually happens is like uh, in folder structure of Oracle uh, Oracle client, as you can see, I have something like Oracle base. Then I have my both clients here. Client one is 32 bit. Client two is 64 uh, bit. I sometimes I have something like network. I mean, I I should have and. Sometimes there is, but sometimes there is not a folder called admin, and then um, all connections are usually placed in the file, which is uh, called tnsnames.ora. It's quite important file, and let's have a look what's in there. So what is what is what's what's going on here it's like a this is our like connection string and that connection string actually describes uh, where are we trying to connect to on which port and uh, something called service name 
this is something that you, what you are going to get from your Oracle um, database administrators. Um, sometimes uh, instead of service name you can see something like SID but Oracle database administrators will tell you what to use there yeah and um, one more thing it's like everything here needs to be properly like set up if you forgot any to close any any bracket you, you you're going to be in big trouble you 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 won't know the errors won't be meaningful so be careful with when setting up this uh, those strings in here um, but what I actually advise is to because we have two clients and in two uh, places we will have to store um, store the, uh, that um, TNS names dot uh, aura um, file I actually advise something else um, it's better to create a common uh, folder for for that file and let's say it's going to be C uh, TNS folder and I put my my file there uh, how do I do that um, in in here in environment um, variables you have something like a, um, TNS admin and that entry will actually point uh, Oracle client it, it doesn't matter if that's 32 bit or 64 bit it will point to that uh, that folder and you can maintain your connections in one place you don't have to jump between two folders everything can be in one place how to verify actually that um, that you that that it works when you install um, uh, client software uh, what you can do you can also install a component called net manager it's it's, it's in installation file it's um, um, it's named SQL uh, SQL net and in here on the top when I opened it it, it, it reads that uh, environment uh, variable and if it is uh, showing whatever you've set up there you're now you're sure that your um, your folder for TNS names dot aura is uh, is properly set up and that's where Oracle client will uh, will go to uh, to to look for that file um if you have uh, trouble with um with uh, setting um the, those strings there is um uh, there is um, a diagnostic tool uh, which is called tns ping and if i if i put a name of my connection it's called production it should say something like that that um, there was an attempt uh, attempting to contact my my server and that's okay if I break anything let me try to break it a little bit All right. I'll go there to my, to my TNS name TNS folder and let's say I'll delete that one yeah illegal address parameters yeah so if you forget about anything it will it should actually show you that uh, there are some issues but sometimes it will show you that uh, it cannot find the connection connection string or the connection description description or something like that so this one needs to be set up properly um, um, okay so we know that um, we know that uh, we couldn't we couldn't use that um, that Oracle uh, um, provider from Microsoft we had to have a we had to have a um, 
drivers installed so um, let me show you what we what we get when we when we set those things up this is yes it's a uh, Dublin I don't need my samples here so um, machine yes okay let's let's go here and let me set the connections to the Oracle so what do we do we take uh, I've seen that there was a people say that uh, only DB is the best so I'm, I will try to set it set the connector on based on only DB so if we go to new and then I'll go here with the with the Oracle. I have to remember actually that this first connector, Microsoft OLEDB pro uh, provided for Oracle, this is something that only works with 32 bit. So it's actually something that it's not going to be further developed. <coughs> you can actually work with it just you know to try something to try to read something which you're going to use it's the one on the bottom oracle provider for ondb because that one is like in both 60 it actually may work works with uh, with 64 bit and also you know sql server is 64 bit it will work with that component oracle provider for ondb so don't use uh, don't don't use that uh, that um, OLED prov uh, B provider for Oracle. But for the sake of the experiment, we will try to use and see what results can be produced. My alias is production, as you can see. HK is my username. Let's have a look. Yeah. Everything. If the connection is successful, it, me it means that my connection trick is is, uh, is proper, uh, properly uh, configured. Okay. And what happens when we use when we want to select a table in here? Even if I have a single table, I can show you there in my schema. Um, in here, when I look at the And when I look at the um, SQL developer, a tool like a, something like a management studio, compar comparable with management studio, I have only one table in my in my schema. But when you turn to when you t when you turn to selecting your table, you will see all of the schemas that are visible for you. So it's better actually to use SQL command. Okay, and I know that my uh, table is called table one. I'll check if I can read some data. Yeah, there is a warning. There is a warning about default cold page, but we leave it for, for the moment and see later what it what it does yeah we can go through that and see that okay I can read some data there are I've prepared a table with the uh, with a um, couple of different uh, data types because what we usually aim for is to get data from external data source in as much close form as the sources so it's like a, we, we deal, of course, with the different data types, but we are trying to have them as close as those which we deal with uh, in, in a SQL Server. So 
what I what I have here is like I have a date uh, date uh, type I have a numeric type with a precision of 18 I have a numeric type with a precision of 38 integer which is actually also numeric in in uh, in Oracle uh, I have a three types two varchar types one uh, plus one Unicode I have a long type which is a kind of a, a text um, uh, type and I have also a small no a number with a small uh, precision uh, which is supposed to be something like a small integer so what is happening when I when I try to read it with the uh, with the uh, with the uh, with the Microsoft um, and driver I'm getting the message and I'll try to save it um, in here and what we can do it's like a I'll show you the original data types that we have there so this the, the first one is date the second time the second one is number with a this precision is 18 the scale uh, the you know the number of uh, decimal points is four this one is a little bit bigger precision 38 this one is just a number so it should indicate that we we deal with the uh, with similar thing to integer or, be or, or, or big int I have a varchar 2 with 20 actually they are the same thing I have also n varchar with, with a 20 uh, I have also long and I have a number with a specific precision 2 and 0 for decimal points and let's have a look at metadata which I'm getting so what happened in here is like this is what SSIS things that it can do with that so as you can see that okay now in my numeric numbers the precision have been um, properly read this is a real number these ones are two these two are strings which is okay but nvarchar is being treated as a non-unicode string so this means that I, I'm going to have trouble when I read uh, Unicode ca uh, characters and uh, long has been converted into DT text um, in here again uh, I, um, the numeric format has been properly um, read to numeric to, um, to zero yeah but uh, what is going on what's going on here it's like a there is a problem with code page and if I try to save it um, I need to have a connection to my that's a database on the on the SQL server and I'm going to save it in in here <coughs> I have my wrappings and if I try to run it it will actually actually run yeah so it reads data but if I if I go to see what's going on there I have actually some differences because uh, if I look at the um, in here if I look at data what I did for for one of the records I've placed some Polish national characters yeah the first record and the C7 column I've placed some Unicode characters yeah. but those characters they did not go through and because um, you've seen that uh, that that provider, that OLED provider, converted that Unicode into non-Unicode uh, column, and that's why I'm losing some of the information that is uh, that is in in database. So 
let's say I will uh, try um, to get the to read of um, that problem with the with the with the code page by default um, the default code page for uh, for the moment I'm going to remove it for the default code page for um, Oracle is 2127 that's US ASCII uh, character and I have to change this little thing always use default code page uh, to true to get the proper um, reading of uh, of um, of uh, that data from Oracle and you can see the, the exclamation mark is gone uh, once again I have to actually reread the definition of tables and if I use the destination sorry in destination I have to do the same thing 21 to 7 always use the code page in here only the V mappings no warning signs and it actually works but again because we have problems with uh, with uni conversion from Unicode to non Unicode we will use all those um, um, uh, those letters which are in different la um, languages than, than English it's like in Irish you also have the like in Michal you have this A with the uh, uh, yeah <laughs> So it's like th this. W this may this may cause some uh, some problems. Yeah. Okay, and uh, we've seen that there is also um, that uh, uh, Oracle uh, connector. So let me set the connection up with the with the provider from Oracle. This one in here production hk hello saving test yep it works okay again i'm not going to select my table so it's select star from table one <coughs> Again, warning sign. But I don't. I know already how to deal with that. Twenty one. Um, you. It, it's just a. Uh, you'll get to that warning thing. It's just a warning. Yeah. Uh, if I'm. If I won't change it, the all the columns that um, because when you when you read it. You've got the definition of columns here. In here, yeah. And if I go here, oh, that's numeric. Yeah. Uh, if I use, if I set it to true, they will be all um, flagged with the, with that code page that I that I uh, that I have here. If not, uh, they will be uh, they will twenty fifty two will be used. Yeah. Um okay. And now let's uh, let's uh, let me save it. Mm, and that's going to be do 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 or only mappings, okay. Ah, I forgot about First thing is to change this thing. Twenty one to seven. False. True. Okay. Yep. And let's have a look what we can see from Oracle provider. Are there any changes? Yes, they are. 
For instance, the numeric value in column 4, it's not a numeric now. It's, it's actually white strings, which is, which is Unicode string. Yeah? Uh, my column number 7, it's now properly set up to be Unicode. And uh, and that's it. That's the that's the difference that I can see. And why do you know why C4 is changed into Unicode string? Do you have any idea why? It's like for uh, all EDP providers for some uh, some of the numeric values for all EDP providers if they are too big to be converted into proper like float or uh, or integer or uh, or numeric values uh, sometimes or uh, OLEDB converts them into uh, Unicode string as a most the most universal uh, data type uh, that can be used it <coughs> it says that okay uh, later you can convert it in whatever tool you use yeah uh, so it's like um, Sometimes you can see that you, you 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 can be surprised that your numbers are not actually numbers; and they are strings. Yeah. Okay. Can you, can you override those data types? In here. In, what else do you in here. I mean, in the in the definition of. Yeah, are you held to those data types? On, on your I'm. It is like a. If you try, you can try to do that, but they will they will be overwritten by, again by, uh, by SSIS. I mean, I can uh, go here, and I can say that I want to have something else. Not the input, the output. You can override it. There. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let me let me do that. But it's like it will go back probably to. To the one that is detected by. Yeah. <coughs> okay, it's visible as numeric one because I've I've changed it. But well, let's let's test it in a minute. No, I think you're right. I think it's the false that I'm doing the transformation. Let's have a look if it works. Yeah, it works. But every every time if you change something in here and you will you will have to reread the definition of those columns, it will you go back it, to you can only do it if it's an implicit conversion as well. Um, if you break any rules, it'll fail. Yeah, then I um I will talk about it later, okay? <laughs> oh. When SSIS is working out what it thinks the right data type should be, how much of the source data set does it check? It's actually, it's actually the, uh, the most of the work is done by driver, and then it's it's kind of a suggest uh, the data types that can be um, can be used in SSIS, yeah. and uh, it's mostly fault of of uh, of um, of uh, pro uh, uh, connector uh, connector, yeah, OLEDB connectors. Okay, so is there any way to say right if the data set is ten million rows? Does it stop at the first million and think, okay, for the first million? It's no, 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 it's, it, it yeah. reads the metadata. It doesn't read any records. Okay. So it's like it, it's, uh, it starts from the ty data types that, is, that are visible. We are directly connecting to Oracle. Okay. So the, the, the metadata is visible for, uh, for OLEDB. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's not like with uh, when we deal with text files, when we can try to detect the best matching mm -hmm. data type, yeah? And, and sample and use some sort of yeah. a sample like uh, it's uh, it's it's a little bit like a, I give you these are my data types okay. do whatever you you want to do with them yeah okay so we're kind of finished with the uh, with OLEDB you've seen that uh, using that old Microsoft uh, OLEDB and using that uh, the newer Oracle DB uh, is different even if they use actually the same same uh, un uh, client underneath. Uh, 
Um, now we know also that we have ADO.net. And if I go here, let's say I convert it to, to zero. Mm. So let's have a look at the LEDB. Uh, sorry, dot net. Uh, dot net. So again, I'm going to use my data flow task and inside I'm taking ADO.net source and I have two options now. <coughs> so if you go here I have in here uh, I have Oracle client data provider and ODB.net <coughs> which is like a it is .net but it says it's an unmanaged driver. And we'll see how 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 are they if they are any different. Again, the same uh, alias that was used in in AllDB <coughs> works fine now. And again. SQL command select star from HK table one. Again, we have our um, and let's try to save it somewhere. We this time we will use ADO.NET destination. connector to the SQL server and I have this database set up the table is um, here Net. All of these are connected, and let's have a look at the metadata. So now we can see that uh, numeric types are mostly the same thing which we've seen before, but the changes in in the string it varter. It now everything is treated as as Unicode. So the result of this is going to be that our data pipe in in SSIS is going to be a bit, you know, thicker because of the size of uh, of uh, of, uh, of a single record. Because it's like for those two columns C5 and C6, I'm going to have like a two bytes per per each each character. Yeah. So it's like now we can see that uh, performance-wise, we may think that this can be something that it's a little bit wrong, but um, fortunately, our uh, Unicode in Oracle is is a Unicode in um, in uh, DTS. Oh, sorry, not DTS, the SSIS. Yeah. So let me have a look if uh, what I'm getting there when I import data. Because as as you probably remember, there were some special uh, national characters, and we can see now that those characters have have been taken properly from have been recorded properly. So um, this was uh, this is this method is actually good if we have a lot of. Um, national characters in text so we if we import any data that is uh, that it's related with uh, with te text other than the other than english is there a way to resolve uh, this issue with OLEDB or you just need to change the yeah there is um, 
what you can do, you can try to convert uh, that column with before it hits the connector. So you construct the query in such a way that uh, it is con uh, converted maybe to non-unicode uh, or uh, something like that. But using proper page, um, you have to play with this a little bit to um, to find a proper cast uh, or uh, to char um, uh, function to um, to be able to, to convert those characters properly uh, when pushing data into into SSIS. Okay. Um, there was also another uh, connector. It was called uh, ODP. So we will try to also to have a look at that one so let me set this up a minute driver here is the, 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 the dialog looks a little bit different but the data source is actually what we are looking for when talking about the connection string production we have our password don't worry, you won't see it. But you may think, actually, it's a very simple one. And okay, test connect. Was, uh, title and production. Okay, so we, we the connection is not going to be found. Mm, yep. <coughs> and that's that's usually the error message this one uh, 2154 uh, when you've got an error in t uh, in tns names.ora file and when you so when you when you think that your files are set up properly and you get th this error review again the strings in in that file because that's probably the problem with uh, with your with your uh, brackets or something like that but of course, if I made a tap typo in here, that's the same result because mm, that string hasn't been found. Okay, so connection successful. Mm, again, I'm not going to select my table. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have my so the destination is going to be again ADO.net. Um, right, that's my table. Up. Now let's have a look at metadata. What what we are getting there. It's similar to what we've seen before with the one difference, the last column. As you can, you, if you remember, there was a number with precision two and zero as, uh, as number of digits. So it actually converted it to, to a small integer. Um, so SSIS thinks now that, or actually ODP.NET components, they suggested that, that okay, if we have a scale equal to zero, uh, and we have a uh, we have this low um, uh, precision number, we will suggest that yeah, this is probably some sort of an integer. But you can see that uh, C4 column wasn't converted into integer because it's probably too big and plus we got got the scale in as uh, in here is four which is kind of a surprising because I have set a zero there yeah. um, uh, what else if if that um, if that length of that number would be four then um, it will probably be DTI four uh, and 
and so on and so on i8 can be also used in in, in here so um here data types are kind of a numeric data types are kind of a closer to what we uh, what we have in in oracle okay let me have a look at if it works yes it is and if we view data you can see that also the the, the national characters had been had been converted because unicode uh, was fine and we have that that column as actually similar type to this one not sure why but it added some precision to 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 that number okay so that's it for for uh, for dot net another set of components that can be used is uh, have been made by a company called Attunity. And they think it's like they can they they claim that the the speed of their those components they are pretty much like a 25 percent faster than than or uh, than OLEDB. But it's it they are not easy to set up. You have to additional uh, you have to um, make um, <coughs> have to additionally install those components. You don't. You have to remember that OCI uh, component from Oracle client needs to be installed on 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 the machine because uh, it uses OCI. And we'll have a have a we'll have a look um, uh, how to work with with uh, with Attunity. So the first thing is that. Um, they are not here, as you can see. They are not in sources, which is a little bit of a surprise. You have to go to common group in in our toolbox, and we have something like a, like Oracle uh, source in here. Uh, you can easily spot it in newer versions of uh, Visual Studio because the the, the icon is uh, is colored. So now, let's go there. Are they free? Are they available? Or are they yes, they are free. I mean, the I think those comp those components for Visual Studio are free for sure. Uh, I'm not sure if there is anything to install on the, on the server side. Uh, but I think because it's like um, many many components. Uh, um, for for instance, CDC components they also have been originally produced by by Attunity and later adopted by. Uh, or bought by Microsoft and um, included in uh, in SSIS. Also, ADO.NET um, uh, components for reading data. They are also originally produced by Attunity. So it's it looks like uh, Microsoft and Attunity they they work closely on on developing those uh, those components. So that's why. There is, there is a highest po higher possibility that also the server components, they, uh, they, they are free. Okay, so I need to uh, name my connection. That's my service name. Works fine. Again, SQL command. So star from HK table one. Jump and surprise. That long column has not been selected, which means that it's probably not supported by uh, those Attunity uh, components. Uh, I haven't been testing other types, but it looks like only simple types. Uh, they work with uh, with uh, with that uh, Attunity components. Uh, uh, nothing that can be blob-like uh, works with uh, with uh, with Attunity. But let's have a look what. Um, 
SSIS data types do we have here? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to save it. I'll use only DB destination. Mm, yeah, that's the one. My table is at Unity mappings. Okay, and now, now we can see that Attunity was actually the closest in discovering data types that I have in my in my Oracle table. I see that my numeric, which is kind of a bigger numeric than, than integer, is has been treated as real uh, number in in um, in SQL Server term terminology. It would be float. Uh, my non-unicode columns have been treated as uh, as as uh, as uh, as non-unicode columns in in SSIS, and my unicode column, which is in Varchar, is actually uh, uh, treated as in Varchar in here. I have also no warning signs in terms of the code page, so it I hopefully it's going to be converted properly. I mean the the data from from Oracle to SSIS and later to uh, to SQL Server, and my numeric number uh, is uh, is now also um, uh, in here. The one with without uh, precision is treated as um, as <coughs> as one of the integer types. Yeah. <coughs> so it looks like a, it looks like Attunity uh, has a close uh, closest guess guess, but there are some problems with. Uh, with Attunity, and if I start here, I won't be able to uh, to read it. <laughs> yep, and actually, it tells me that I have invalid number. And usually, those types of errors they happen when you have something, some, let's say, a text file exported from. French SAP, where, um, or Ger or maybe German SAP, where you have uh, when you when you comma the you know, decimal point is not a point is a is a comma yeah or uh, thousand separators they are not spaces they are dots for instance that's like like in like in German uh, uh, regional regional settings. Uh, that suggests me that that I have, but if you remember, I have uh, the settings on my server are U.S. settings. So what is what what's wrong with with my numbers? They should be all fine, yeah. So what is actually happening is that um, the order of columns uh, is kind of unlucky because if you remember. Uh, there are like a you know number numeric uh, characters, uh, also longest character, and then now numeric. If I uh, if I go here. And I put a normal query, which means normal select statement with all columns listed. This is going, this is actually going to be the same thing. Yeah. It should also fail, but now I will be able to uh, to try to fix something. Yeah. Um, so what if uh, I start to to check my uh, my columns by commenting them out and see if I have any problems, for instance, with those 
Are there any problems with those two or three columns? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Ah, yeah. Comma. So let's say. I'll delete it. It's going to be quicker. Was it already be? Yeah. Yep, my some of my numerics are fine, especially those ones which with precision. Yeah, so that's not a problem with comma or dot. Uh, what is actually happening is that the column which was indicated as as the one which uh, which uh, can't be converted. If you go down to the situation like that, that your query excludes that column, that C8 column. And if I go there and I have all my other mappings, set up. This will actually work. So this means that if the, if an in, if you use attunity uh, components, and if there is a column that automatically is excluded from reading, then exclude that column from from your query, or maybe convert the query or change the query to convert the column to use like a more attunity friendly data type. Uh, because it will cause problems, yeah. Any questions to those data providers or connector providers, connection providers? Tunity aside, which one would you recommend? Which would you be your preference for? Um, Attunity would be my first choice. OLEDB the second, but it also depends if I have if I need to use parameters or something like that. OLEDB also is uh, is uh, is problematic with uh, with parameters. I'll show you later. Um, but normally I would start with Attunity and then uh, if I have any issues with them, I would go for uh, I would go for OLEDB. So now let me show you the problem uh, with uh, with data because it's like we know that uh, sometimes can be a situations when uh, we have uh, some data that okay can be read but it can be it cannot be um, um, it cannot be saved and let's let me add one record in here it's going to be first of January I'll use the year 001 whatever here whatever there I'll try to delete those records from the original table. Um, mm, 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 mm. 
Okay, table. Um, that was the table. And test. What was the name? Test MS only and uh, test Aura only. Try to read them. <laughs> okay, so now I, have, now I have issues. Yeah, so it's like the first problem is um, this is about invalid date. Yeah, because it's like we we know that uh, the range of day date time does not cover the year zero 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 uh, zero one. So. Um, in case of, uh, as you can see, in case of, uh, in case of the uh, the Microsoft, the old uh, provider, the old provider has thrown the error on the beginning. The the OLEDB uh, by Oracle uh, had properly read that record. I mean, that was taken and converted into um, a DB date time. But it could be it could be saved into into SQL Server, yeah, because that's out of out of range. There were two different types of uh, problems in in here. Uh, how to avoid those uh, those problems? You you need to probably um, be sensitive for those for this data, which is. Uh, if you look uh, uh, on some customers on real data, you can see that some records have uh, very strange uh, values like year 9999 or year 000000. Uh, all through, I, I wasn't able to, to, uh, to save it with a simple insert statement uh, to Oracle, but 0001, it was possible. Um, the other problem is um, th that we can have is problem with parameters because if I want to um, <coughs> go with something like that where C4 A I N T between one and two hundred that should work yeah. Yep. But if I go with the question mark and I go to parameters, it will actually tell me that I should use SQL command variable, which means that I have to go to expressions and I have to concatenate my uh, my query um, to put. I have to like put the <coughs> values of my uh, my parameters into variables in in SSIS and to do all that funky stuff there. And okay. The other the other thing is that when. Um, there was a one thing when that integer was actually converted into um, a big integer. A big integer has been converted into string. That's not the one. Where was it? This is numeric. This is real number. I don't remember now, but 
But if you get into such trouble when your your number it gets converted into Unicode string, what you have to do you have to cast. I mean you have to you have to convert your number before it go it reaches uh, SSIS. So in our case it's going to be something like that. Let me go here. Hopefully I have now that let me grab that query again. And I need to go to cast C I N T S number say if we know that our numbers are smaller then I say I will go for 11 0 s and then we will get data types or we will get our data we will have we will have our record size actually smaller and uh, we will avoid uh, conversion inside SSIS uh, package if I go here, mm. yep, uh, I can see that this one has been detected now as numeric with precision eleven. Yeah, and it will work for. Oh no. Ah, because we have our uh, our problematic record there, yeah. If we remove it, all should be fine. So the other method to, to read data from from um, from from such external uh, data sources um, as uh, as Oracle is to use uh, maybe not ETL but ELT, which means that we first load data to our database using, for instance, um, linked server and then do some conversion there but then if you fall into into problems I because at the moment I don't have it um, set it up properly because I don't on the uh, on the SQL server there uh, the drivers are not set up properly but what will you what will happen when for instance there are uh, situations with dates like we had before you will get no error actually or um, th that's what I've noticed it's like you're you're getting no error. You, it just stops reading data. Uh, the SQL Server stops reading data, and uh, and that's it. You won't know what happened. So uh, when you deal with Oracle, it's actually better to use SSIS and to use connectors connectors from uh, whatever connectors you use because they will give you some sort of a message error message about problems with your data. Um, if you use a linked server, some messages can be omitted. You won't see them in uh, in whatever way uh, you you use. We, for instance, had a had a project when uh, uh, when we had like a, um, a Oracle data warehouse, and there was a, a SQL Server layer on top of it as a data source for cubes and uh, uh, we, we were using linked, uh, linked server there during processing during cube processing or partition processing we had we had issues with no error message uh, when we had problems with those for instance dates out of range something like that something that it, it couldn't be converted into uh, directly into SQL server data type 
So we have to be very careful when you when you when you use ETL oh sorry ELT uh, methods uh, via li linked servers. So then there's a problem with linked servers primarily just with Oracle that you saw, or is it in general? I haven't seen that in any uh, this missing missing error message problem I've seen only in in Oracle. Mm -hmm. So <coughs> uh, avoid linked servers, yeah, if you can. Um, of course, if you have if you have uh, if you have problems, then. Um, with your data types, use cast uh, or other functions to, to convert data. Uh, and these are most, uh, uh, the other, okay, a separate problem is, uh, is performance. Yeah? It's like try to include only the columns that you read because of the uh, size of a record and buffer size also. You can, the other, the other thing is like, uh, um, is that uh, this the selection of data connector um, based on your experience or something like that? Uh, this will have a great I influence on also on sizes of of your uh, of your of your uh, a, a single record in in your in your pipe yeah, in SSIS. Any questions to this part? So, oops. Okay, so let me wrap the whole thing up <coughs> with the uh, with Oracle. Um, you have to remember that this uh, the connector that is built in Visual Studio or in it is in Datos. It is only 32 bit. You <coughs> you're not supposed to work with that one. This will, this can be something that you may try when you read data, when you maybe profile your data, but better leave it. Just leave it. Yeah. Uh, Oracle OLEDB is something that is this is the, the, the component that is widely used and it, uh, it does not need anything else than the Oracle client and uh, if you want to if you have um, if you search for uh, something that will work better with your data types go for Attunity but you have to remember that it won't work with all of those data types yeah some blob types will be ignored but uh, but it it's also the case in oracle db it also does not work uh, well with some some data types in ssis itself and if you install all our oracle db client um, if you want to use sql developer the tool that i was showing to you when i was for instance adding record and you have to remember that JDK needs to be installed also on the on the server, so that's additional stuff. And normally, uh, Oracle client is enough. On my machine, there was also only a regular Oracle client in 32-bit and in 64-bit uh, version. But uh, there is something also like Oracle Data Access Components. It's a separate ins uh, uh, like installation package, uh, but it has a wider palette of uh, uh, connector components uh, when working with, uh, with uh, Visual Studio. But it's, I would say that this is something that would be more for developers. Uh, for software developers. Uh, okay, so you have to remember that each package, each um, each client package is approximately 750 or 800 uh, in in 100 MB, MBs inside. So it's together, if you download 32-bit, 
package and then a 64 bit it's going to be 1.4 GB something like that uh, the order of installation is important so <coughs> first you need to install 32 bit package the next thing is uh, you have to install the 64 bit package Be why because um, uh, there are some of course registry settings there are some the, the paths that are in uh, in path uh, environment are uh, variable. This is something which is important. Um, and uh, some people say that uh, you, need, you need to set up Oracle uh, underscore home uh, environment variable, but that's not true actually. Uh, that's not needed for edit. I wasn't setting this up on my machine and it everything was uh, was working fine so you don't need for proper not proper but for normal op operation you don't need to set up oracle home why i i don't advise setting it up because we already have two clients and there are they they work as um, as two separate oracle homes so better not to have uh, to have it set globally uh, applications will select one that they that they want to work with. Um, if you go, uh, if you have those installations options during setup of uh, Oracle client, um, if you want to be sure that your <coughs> TNS um, names dot ORA file uh, or the folder where it sits, it's set up properly install SQL uh, SQL net uh, application uh, it will uh, you will also get among the utilities that uh, uh, are in client you will also get TNS ping and use it if you want to confirm that your strings are set up properly in your TNS names you may avoid using TNS names uh, by uh, actually uh, taking that whole uh, string uh, in uh, when we have when I had my definition like production equal and then everything in brackets you can actually take what's in brackets and put it uh, instead of that, uh, that production name but uh, you know it's easier to type uh, just production than the whole thing yeah um, you may want to also install SQL plus because uh, that's kind of a like you know command line uh, command line tool for querying Oracle, and uh, it's useful when when you quickly want to check something or you want or even connectivity because even if you have uh, wrong entries in TNS names or uh, SQL Plus can connect to from version 11 it can connect to Oracle directly using server address, uh, port name, and the, um, and the service name. And if you were, if you want more stuff in your in Visual Studio, you may go for, for that ODAC components. It's simi it's actually, uh, it looks like a Oracle client on steroids. And when you, when you install Oracle client, you, you have you're getting like different options, and what is important, it and what uh, uh, is like don't try to put everything on your machine because it will take space and will not be used. Yeah, the things that are important are Oracle ODBC driver, SQL developer only if you want to uh, uh, want to have a visual tool to uh, to query um, um, Oracle. This one is important, Oracle provider for OLEDB. And if you use, if you want to have ODP, uh, or uh, sorry, if you want to use .NET connections uh, like uh, uh, ADO.NET, you need this one. Uh, this one is not needed. This is just for uh, web applications. When you want to uh, save application uh, states in uh, in oracle um, in oracle uh, database um, 
this screenshot is from ODAC, so this this Oracle client on uh, steroids. But uh, you can see that there are some extra components like uh, Oracle Developer Tools for for Visual Studio, and there's also some uh, documentation for that. But uh, as I said, that's not needed for us for BI developers. I would say that's more for uh, for uh, software developers. Uh, data types. Um, if we this table is for for OLEDB, uh, and you could see that um, um, uh, for instance uh, uh, I had my number type and it was converted to numeric, uh, long was converted to text, in some cases it was n text, uh, but depending on which, which data provider uh, we were using, but you have to remember that there are some and some data types that are not supported at all, yeah, like a row, UID, or C globs, blobs, files, uh, var array also, um, the user defined types, you know, something that completely cannot be uh, taken by, uh, by, by SSIS, um, and the uh, row ID and U row ID. The uh, it's like OLEDB tries to convert everything into uh, mostly into strings, uh, but if something is not known to uh, to OLEDB, uh, it won't be won't be converted. Yeah. So, um, just to finish things, it's like a you know you've seen that. If you if you use drop down to select uh, select your source table, you get actually a list like that. Even if you if you if you're in your schema, uh, there were only few objects because it actually reads all of the objects that you have access to. The other method would be to actually to limit access to those other objects. But anyway, you will have access to also to some system views and all that crap, which is not needed. Uh, so use SQL queries when you when you get data from uh, from Oracle. Um, also, just those columns which you need. Uh, if you need to, it's like it happens. For instance, with uh, with those uh, numeric uh, large numeric columns, convert them to something smaller. That's necessary to keep your system, you know, running smoothly, and no, no, because it's like a, then it can process more records in, in less time. And beware that in even if data types they look the same, they may have different ranges. The, the scope that is valid for for a particular data type can be different in other database than, than in the SQL Server. So you have to also deal with that. Some other, sometimes um, um, they just have to be like filtered out or maybe use case statements, something like, something that will bring you that data to some to, or no, no, uh, use null if um, your values are out of out of range so this is something that you have to be aware of it may happen that your data will not be able to, to be stored in, in SQL server thank you that was it uh, any questions any questions now <laughs> <laughs> I know for some of uh, the level of session is between 200, and, uh, let's say 300, more closely to 200. But I hope it gave you a wider picture of what's available when you when you read when you try to read data from from an example of external data source like Oracle. Any questions? Um, I can ask one about um, who use 
One of our common data sources is MySQL. Do you come across some of that type of issues with MySQL? Yes, I came across a few months, for instance. Um, I was reading, I was reading, da reading data, and there were a few like string, like varchar columns, yeah. And the first few rec the first few records, they had null values in, uh, in, let's say, second, third, and fourth uh, column. And what happened? It's like that col that value in the first um, first column was repeated to those other columns. That's why that's what I found in MySQL. And the tunity that you mentioned earlier, where that would be your preference for reading for Oracle today, and um, do numerous open sources or are those focus? Uh, yes, they have they have all connectors for all of that. I've seen Teradata. Probably there are like you know this uh, this list of uh, of um, uh, of data sources. We we use a Tunity for our client back up in the north, mm -hmm. and uh, we managed to cut down their ETL browser from twelve hours to about less than thirty minutes by just using a Tunity. Well, mm -hmm. Fairness, they were using the built-in Microsoft Drive. Oh yeah, <laughs> and that one le reads basically one by one, and it's just ridiculous. So we we went straight to Unity, and we use it and we cut it. I don't know how much it would be with the Oracle one, but with a Unity, mm -hmm. it was under 30, 30 minutes. Officially, like in Microsoft documents, it says that a Unity is twenty-five percent better in reading data from Oracle than all ODB uh, uh, connectors. That's what they officially say. But it's of course it's they it may differ from case to case. Yeah. You know this thing about the Unicode uh, one don't wanna teach anybody to suck eggs here, so please but uh, there's a there's an interesting case and the reason I mentioned it is because the case was actually Microsoft. Mm -hmm. uh, it was once uh, in the innovation center in Thames Valley Park. And uh, there was a guy there who was spending 12 hours, I remember the previous day, he was trying to troubleshoot a Microsoft client. And they were having issues that on the web page, a uh, client in France, some of the cards just came garbled. The database was fine. And then I just looked myself, that's the Unicode of the, just completely like it wasn't even paying attention. I said, that's the Unicode of the, of the web page. So sometimes you need to look as well at the front end. So the page was the doc type. Uh, uh -huh. You know, when, when you have a page, it was saying this is Unicode or whatever it was not Unicode, and the data of the database was the other way around. So you can get data. Yeah, in a, I know what you mean. Results. So the concatenation of those two uh, non-Unicode and Unicode was making that mess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else? Configuration of the TNS file, that's mm -hmm. the area I found most troublesome. Uh, sometimes the documentation is not clear about where it should be. There's a default folder and then there's other folders and it's almost like a DNS post name. Yeah, there are other, also other names to resolve those. Uh, <coughs> maybe to, may, not, maybe not resolve, but uh, what I've seen is like a, uh, you can use LDAP for for that you can also use easy uh, connect uh, I mean I'm talking about um, methods of resolving that connection strings yeah so it's TNS names dot is, uh, is one of one of the options and it's like a when you if you go to if you go in here And you use that net manager. This this will actually tell you what what methods are used uh, uh, when uh, when it's trying to resolve the connection string. As you can see, uh, normally it is, uh, but by standard. Uh, when you install uh, Oracle client, on the right hand side there are TNS names, easy, EZ connect, and then host name. 
but I've um, taken EZ Connect now because I'm, I'm, uh, I'm using it. Uh, and this host name there, is that the ordinary DNS host name? Or is it an Oracle host name? Uh, I'm not sure. I wasn't. I never. I never used anything else that TNS names or direct uh, uh, host name, port name, yeah. and. So uh, TNS names is the best way to go. Yeah, I've seen also configurations with uh, with LDAP, but then you have to have a, a separate server. It's an Oracle Internet Directory server, something like that, and, and it needs to be set up in uh, SQL Aura. SQL net aura file. Um, if you go, if we go in here, this this one, the SQL net or uh, dot aura. It, this is the file which actually tells us which methods are used to to resolve. And if you use an external server uh, for resolving the uh, connection string uh, connection strings, uh, then it if you use LDA, uh, LDAP or uh, which means a separate the server uh, that Oracle uh, Internet di Directory server. Then the con configuration or address of the server needs to be set up there in this SQL uh, SQL dot Aura. More you can find on uh, on Oracle dot com or docs dot Oracle. .com. Just get the Oracle DBA to give you the connection. Yeah, <laughs> they 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 usually take care of that. Yeah. Give you the TNS entry yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it's like if 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 um, it happens that you work on your own machine uh, and you have to install uh, Oracle client TNS names, uh, this is something that you need locally. Yeah, if you connect directly to uh, to Oracle uh, database, or you develop SSIS packages which connect directly. And you should be actually aware of this file because when you have like different environments, <laughs> like, let's say development tests and production, then setting uh, the, the names that you, the connections that you see there, they they may point to different servers also. Anything else? If not, thank you very much. Thank you for hosting me.